me welcome uh, my guest for tonight, Claudia Gomes. Claudia, please welcome. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your journey and uh, your son and yourself um, towards this, uh, your parenting in, in regards to autistic. Um, as our topic for tonight is parenting a child with autism. Uh, I know we've all parents that we all have issues and there's no manual anyway for parenting. Yes. But I think when you have an autistic child, it is much more special. And hence you joining us tonight to share your journey with your young man. And uh, without much further ado, Claudia, please tell us who's Claudia. Oh, well, I'm a Brazilian born lady. Came to London to study, and uh, I'm still studying. I think we never stop studying, right? You never stop learning. And no. uh, I've got a child, and he's a special child. He's in the spectrum of autism. And what can I say? That he's special in many ways, and uh, the fact that he has this disability, it has helped me to become a better person, much more aware of others, of the needs of others, and it has helped me to know myself even better. So it helps you to, to be more, to show more empathy towards others as well and understand that we all have a journey, as you said, we all have a journey. We can't mm -hmm. compare our journeys with somebody else. So no. I've got a good no. guide, so that's okay. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. And I, we do appreciate you sharing your journey uh, and your young person with us. And um, let me take you back to where, yes. how old is your young man? Uh, Edward, he is nine years old. Right, let me take you back to nine years. Uh, when he was being born. Please tell us how you found out. Was it diagnosed immediately when he was born or how did he develop the symptoms as he was growing up? Okay, uh, well, there are different theories for the cause of autism. We, we, we don't really have a straightforward answer. Uh, Eddie was no. born in 2011, and when he was about one year and a half, and I used to take him to the children's center, and mm -hmm. he was just not comfortable around other children. He would cry a lot if we were clapping. Even to sing happy birthday to him, it used to be a challenge. And I was just concerned because... When we around people that we know, those who are familiar to us, he would display some sort of uncomfortable behavior. Uh, he could be very loud. And unfortunately, sometimes he was a bit aggressive as well. Uh, not just towards me, but towards others. And one of the, the, the carers at the children's center, she came to me and she said, I think your son has autism. And I asked her why? And she said that, that there's something about him, the way that he's behaving around other people and that he's not looking to you. He wasn't looking at me. We didn't really have much of uh, eye contact at the time. He was avoiding me all the time and he'll be spinning around and his speech was delayed as well. So those are one of, you know, a few of the signs that I could realize that something was not quite right with me my child and uh, the, the the whole process to accept and deal with that and be you know strong enough to deal with that and have a proper diagnosis it took about two years it wasn't a straightforward thing it took quite some time because you see that there, there are a lot of children going through the same lots of parents going through the same yeah so yeah i had to wait a little right claudia i'm just gonna ask this um how your thoughts um, and your feelings when you found out, because um, you said it took about two years for yes. you to get the result. Um, yes. What was your thoughts? What was your feelings? Did you feel, were you in denial? Did you feel guilty? Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, just tell us what was going through your mind at that, at that time. Yes, uh, that's a good question because that's quite a... It was a very emotional and uh, self-discovering journey as well at the time. Uh, it took basically two years for me to get diagnosed and have an answer of like, now I know what's going on so I can act on it. 
So during that period, mm. I tried to meet with different parents as well that were going through the same or some of those who already had uh, the diagnose because I was, I was feeling guilty and I thought there's something wrong with me. So what have I done wrong or uh, does it have anything to do with the way I was feeling during my pregnancy because I was quite sick? Did I not take good care of myself? So it's reflecting now on my child. So uh, as a mm -hmm. parent, you, you kind of, you blame yourself for everything because our goal is to be perfect and have perfect children. And life is not like that. We all have our faults. And uh, uh, it was very emotional. And I tried to look inside myself and try to understand what have I done wrong? What should I have done differently? Could I have prevented it? And you, you can't, there's no answer for that scientifically. There's no answer because it's not, autism is not considered like a disease, it's a special condition of the brain, you see? So it's not a disease that you go and you have a treatment and it goes, no, it's a long life condition. And for the yeah. parent to accept that, it, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. So I do remember lots of crying. I was never really in denial. I, I understood that something had to be done. Uh, I cried a lot, a lot, a lot. I cried for a long time alone. I didn't want to tell anybody because I was afraid of someone pointing the finger at me and saying, that's your fault, you have done this, or you were too sad, you were depressed, or you've caused that. So for, for a long mm -hmm. period of time, I was going through that alone. Uh, well, not alone with God, because I believe in God. So that was the comfort I had at the time, was, was my faith that somehow, whatever happened, I would be and okay. I can tell you, Claudia, yeah, I can tell you, Claudia, it has worked for you, because for nine years, you've managed to bring up this child, this unique child, because what I say is, um, I, I, I work with people who've been diagnosed with autistic spectrum mm -hmm. and I think it's treating them as a unique person because I believe everybody is unique it is not every, it's not seeing the autistic part of it but it's taking yes. that person as a person individually and with yes. the uniqueness they bring along because we learn through their journey as the teachers a lot and I think you were doing so well for nine years you, you you're a star no, th thank you. <laughs> but it takes a village. I won't, I won't take the credit for myself. I need to share with my spiritual guidance and I share with friends that supported me and mm -hmm. school, school staff as well when I was taking him to nursery and some charities that they helped me. And the other parents, you see, that they, they were there because they knew that it's like you in the valley. That's that's the feeling that I think that's the best word I can describe <laughs> what I felt as if I was in a deep, deep valley alone and everything was unknown and I could not see a way out. And I felt that even though I could get help from somebody else, I was not strong enough to help someone that would need me forever because a child is forever. Mm -hmm. And autism mm. doesn't go with one, two, three, four years. It's a long life condition, yeah. as I said. So yeah, it, it took yeah. a village and it still takes a village. So support, your support network is very important. You, you can't do that alone. And if I may ask, how did you get to find out about this um, support network? Was it from your church? Was it from the hospital? Or was it from Nastery where he was attending? How did you come to oh. get to know them? Okay, uh, at first I, I went crazy when I heard the, the word autism. I wanted to understand what it was, what the condition meant. And from the moment I understood, I went online. I was Googling, you know, trying to find uh, who has been through this. And so my, my journey to have a network, a support network started online. I was just crazy asking for help, asking for support, asking for guidance and advice from everybody I could talk to. 
And then I went to school. I went back to school to the nursery where, you know, I first heard about that. And uh, they were fantastic. And from that moment, they start introducing me to other parents as well. And they started introducing my son, putting my son in touch with other children as well. So he could somehow uh, develop his speech because it was very, very much delayed. Um, and, and then, yeah, church. Church was a, was a big, big, uh, big point in my life because at the church, they had someone just to stay with my child, you see, and they also introduced me to different parents and they were trying to do short courses there so they yeah. could know how to better cater for my son. So I never, I never really felt alone. I think mm. the period of loneliness, you feel alone at this journey if you don't open up, if you don't talk to anybody, that can be very depressing. But for the moment you yeah. feel confident yeah. enough to ask for help, ask yeah. for help. You're only human, you need help, we all need. Asking for help is a big step in our lives. And then you start to connect with other people. You start learning about the condition and you also learn about yourself. And that's very important. I think one point that you really uh, say um, here is you developed an awareness. Because yes. there's no way you could have been able to look after you, your child without knowing, hang on a minute. And I think the first thing you did was to accept it. And which is a positive thing, acceptance. Because when you accept it, then you open doors. And yes. you, you, you decided, you know what, I'll have to develop myself. I'll have to enhance my skills. I'll have to enhance my knowledge yes. for me to be able to look after my, my, my child. I, there's no manual for parenting. But he is a unique child. And I think yes. what you've done is a very positive way to develop your awareness and to be able to teach yourself because it's a, he's teaching you so much and you are learning from him as well. Every day. <laughs> and they say knowledge is power. And I believe it's that knowledge that has enabled you to be where you are, that it rooted you to be that person you are today that you can look back and say, you know what? It has been a worthwhile journey. Yes. Yes, it's, it's been it's been a pleasure. <laughs> Honestly, it's been a pleasure, and I'm nothing but grateful. At first, of course, it's not easy when you're discovering, you're trying to understand how that happened and how to work through this, because you have to be there. You have to be strong for somebody else, not just for one night. You have to be strong forever for a person, mm -hmm. and my son started to develop way better his speech at the age of four so during that period you see i didn't know what he wanted if he wanted water he was just screaming and yelling the whole time and i said i, I did not know what he wanted he will get violent and frustrated mm. yeah so for the parent to understand that you're doing nothing wrong that the child is frustrated and that the child is also going through something that he can express properly, it takes a lot. It takes a lot. And we have to be brave. We have to be strong. You need to hold on to faith. You need to hold on to all your beliefs, you see, because it's not easy. It's not easy. It is worth it, yeah? Of course it is. And it, it gets better from there. From the moment you accept, denial is not an option. From the moment you accept, you act on it. You have a positive mindset you have a good attitude towards the problem let's put it like that yeah. you know so you, you find a solution you find a way to deal with that and it gets to the point that you're strong enough for yourself for your family and you're strong enough to help somebody else because i'm not the only one there are a lot of parents yeah. behind me so i'm meeting them halfway so the same sort of support that i had Today I'm able to help somebody else going through the same. And and that is why you're here with us, Claudia, sharing your story with us, which is very yes. inspiring. Yes. And that leads me to my next question. Let me ask you, um, and feel free, if you can't be able to answer this, I'll understand. Uh, what has been the challenges that you've been encountered? I know you've mentioned one was 
communication because he yes. you could not understand what he wanted. I know that was the yes. number one. What else did you um, find difficult or challenging bringing him up? Okay, I'll, I'll go through stages then because uh, my son has developed in different in different ways. Yeah, his milestones are different. Uh, yeah. So at first was communication. So I didn't know his needs. I didn't know if he was comfortable or not. So for the fact that he could not express himself, even though I believe that in his mind, he thought that he was expressing himself very clearly and I was not understanding, yeah. that would lead him to be frustrated. And sometimes I would be frustrated too because I thought, okay, I'm the adult here and I'm not able to understand what a child wants. So that, that was very difficult for me and very difficult for him. For the moment he started speaking, he had the condition called, what's the proper term for that? Echolalia, I think. I'm not 100% sure about that. I think the term is echolalia. So he would speak, but he would repeat everything that was said to him. He was not really mm -hmm. understanding. Even though he could say something, he didn't understand the word of the meaning of things. Uh, that, that was tough. That was tough. Uh, night terrors as well is something that unfortunately... We have to go through that. Mm. So he would have, because the brain, the, the autistic brain, well, one of the aspects of it, because a huge spectrum, as I said, but my son's brain could channel through and press whatever was on his brain. Yeah. And at night, he would sleep like two, three hours max. <laughs> so would that, not. oh my God, yeah. I'm so glad that is over because nothing happened, okay. but for me it was very difficult. He was screaming at night, and uh, the other thing that would happen quite a lot as well, if we were going to a different place, or if we're going to the place we used to, but on a different route, he would not be comfortable with that. And that could result on his aggressive side, his aggressive, pardon, his aggressive side, uh, been showing up quite some quite too much to mm. be honest so mm. i was punched i was kicked he was screaming he would have tantrums and it's complicated especially if you're on a public transport because to the eyes of society that have no understanding i don't like the word ignorant but they were ignorant because they didn't know what was going on to yeah. them i was like a bad mom and my child was bossing me around so every time I had to be explaining, he's not used to this route and uh, we have to be on this bus today. So I had to explain everyone because you could just feel everyone judging you. Most people would not say a word, but the eye, like, you know, you are bad mom, look at your child. He can't behave, you haven't taught him well. But that was not the case. So most of the times I have to be explaining myself. And explaining my son, I felt like I was exposing him way too much because I didn't want anyone to judge me or to judge him. So to be able to deal with that today, uh, yeah, I had to I had to go through a lot to be able to stand firm and know that it's gonna be okay. You know, I'm, I'm learning today's like this. Tomorrow's gonna be different. I'll try different strategy. I'll learn more about autism and see what I can do, because I'm, I'm discovering something every single day. It's interesting. Yes, and it's interesting. It, it is interesting, and sometimes it's unfortunate that the society, and unfortunately that is who we are, we are quick to judge. And yes. that is bad, unconscious biases sometimes, without even uh, knowing what's happening behind the scene. But I think for you to explain yourself every single time, I think... Oh dear. That was difficult, oh. and I will say you you did. You, I don't know how you managed to do it because why do I have to explain myself to somebody else? Why does they have to? Why? Because you're scared of being judged, and on the other hand, you want you don't want your son to be seen as this child who is misbehaving. Exactly, and uh, it was very difficult, Patricia. It wasn't easy at all. Yeah. Uh, nerve wracking. I was emotionally not stable at all right. because everywhere I would go, I was always 
in a defensive position. Mm. So I wasn't free even to smile because from the moment I left home, I would be thinking someone is going to do something to my son or someone's going to point a finger at me. So I was always prepared to be the kind of fighting person. You see, I would always argue with someone or explaining my son and I was exhausted about it. I was exhausted. It, yeah, it was hard. Okay. It was really hard, really hard. So at the point, it got to the point that I didn't want to go anywhere. And unfortunately yeah, today, mm -hmm. yes, yes. Lots of people isolating themselves for that, for that matter, not because of Corona, but because they are concerned about other people's conception of their child, how they're going to perceive my child. Oh, I don't want to be judged or I don't want my son to be labeled. So you just stay home, but your child has the same right as everybody else to go out, oh, yeah. to be free, to socialize, to breathe fresh air, to go to the park. And to, and to be a child like anybody else, to be a child and to, <laughs> to exist. without being labeled. And I could feel, I could feel you, 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 your resentment because you're scared, because you don't want him, number one, people to judge, number one, you don't want him to go somewhere and people will be like, they don't want to be with him, which yes. is, uh, it, it's, it's, it's horrible. Uh, it's unfortunate. And I think you explaining yourself to everybody else, it's a positive thing because you, you're telling them, listen, it's not everything you see, it's what you think it is. Exactly. Yeah. And I think you did, you did it well. You stood up for yourself and for your son. Listen, don't think what you see, it, it is what you see. Because we are all human beings. We all come with our own baggage. We all come with our stereotyping mind and exactly. labeling things. That is what we are good at. But I think you did it very well. You know, I need to go there and stand for my son. I need to tell people, listen, it is not what you think he is. He is a unique child and he, he needs people to understand him for him to be able to be accepted in the society. And it's unfortunate that we have to do these things instead of us being a society that is ready to accept. We are, it's a, we are a society which is ready to question, but on the other hand, we don't see behind the scene. But I think standing for yourself, it is a big thing and for your son, because nobody else will. Exactly, exactly. It was, uh, was a very difficult time, but from the moment, it's kind of liberating. I was trying to think of the word to describe that moment, like when I could stand for myself and be, you know, there for my child. It was liberating. Yes. It was a very liberating moment mm -hmm. because I regained confidence and I knew who I was. Yes. I mm -hmm. assumed an identity like okay i'm the mom that's my son yeah. he's a human yeah. being he's got the same rights as everybody else and he has oh, to yeah. be respected so yeah it was quite empowering we need and we need to empower people we need to empower people you know as much as we can because to to be out there and uh be a voice to those who exactly. can learn voice for themselves and yes. uh, be a voice of change and ad advocate for those who cannot speak on their behalf. And I believe you, you, you did it well and you're doing it well. Um, and the other thing, the other question I would ask you is, what motivated you? I know faith has been your strong um, weapon. You've all, always stood on your faith and you walked with the word of God. I'm sure you had a word over all this. What else besides your faith? What kept you going? What keeps you going every single day? Or oh, every moment you felt, I'm almost giving up. Well, what keeps me going? Um, I'm, I've got a very strong conviction of my faith. And that keeps me going every single day. And I express gratitude in the morning. I express gratitude when I'm going to sleep. I can't, I can't live without praising God and communicating with yeah. Him constantly. Mm. Because it, it, it's a mutual, it's not... The kind of faith that I have, I, I believe is a mutual faith. I can't, I can't just talk to God and have nothing. You see in different ways. I need to. 
he's from God as well. I need to take care of him. Yes. He's a present. Yes. Yes. So that, that keeps me going. I'm responsible for, his, for, for taking care of a special person. He's mm. like, you know, like a diamond and you have to mold every single day. I think what well, we all are at the end of the day, we are our diamonds. And we need to be molded sometimes through fire, <laughs> sometimes through oh, yes. water. Like gold. Mm-hmm. But we have to stay strong and stand firm. Yeah, you, always the joy of the Lord is our strength. And without it, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. And we have to march on. And, and I think every time we have to accept where we are and also be positive and also, you know what, be grateful. Always. There's the reason why I'm here. Um, and there's a reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Because I think God always say he has better plans for us, regardless. And sometimes I know as human we are, we don't see it. But he has better plans for us in every situation. And he yes. always says in every situation, we need to give him thanks. And I think not only by words, verbalizing it, I think it's even through action, demonstrating what we are doing. And I think you went there, took this uh, positively and you ran with it. Yes. And you're still going on with it. And I think you're there doing what you can do best because there's no manual, even as parents. It doesn't no. matter. Parents, there's no manual into parenting. Mm. And I think we are learning every single moment. These children, they teach us a lot and we learn from them every single day. They are the way. They learn from us, we learn from them. And I think a child with autistic, they are very unique because they come with a lot of, lot of, lot of things to teach us. And you have to adapt to their ways. And exactly. exactly that is what you do. Exactly. Well done. Right. Well, thank you. Right. Tell us about this your young person, Mr. Edward. Uh, would you like us to meet him? Is he there? Can we meet him? Oh, yes, you... of course. He's, he's a brilliant... Well, he's my joy, my pride and joy. I love him. <laughs> That's how I describe him. I, know, I, I absolutely know you, you love my son. Yeah, I know amazing. you said you want to share this journey with us and him being there. Uh, but before he comes in, uh, yeah. uh, how old is he? Edward is nine. He's nine. Does he nine go to school? Old, yes. Pardon? Is it, does he go to school? Yes, yes. He goes to school, he's in year four, and he goes to a mainstream school uh, oh, because in his school they have, they have a resource base so they can help children to access education, right. they help children with disabilities. So it's fantastic because they are included. And oh yes, it helps and, a lot. It helps and, a lot. And, and they, are, they are given an opportunity like everybody else because yes. they they should not be treated differently. Exactly, I totally agree with you. They should not be seen as a child with autistic. That is just one aspect of their life, of, of who they are. But mm. they are a person with so many talents with so many gifts inside them. Yeah, he's very, he's very gifted. Um, how did you find, when you started school, what was your fears? Because as a parent, I'm sure there the, the, are fears even when you send your child fast to school. Yes. Uh, to nursery, I was quite okay because those people at nursery, they, they, they were the ones helping me through the process of diagnosed, mm. of, of getting yeah. diagnosed. But for the moment mm-hmm. he went to primary school, he went to reception, I was so worried. I was thinking, mm-hmm. how can he communicate his needs? Is anyone there going to be able to understand what he needs, what he wants, yeah. if he's going through something, who can read him, basically? Yeah. And will he ever have friends? Oh, I'm emotional already because I'm thinking about something. It's okay. One of my biggest concerns when Edward went to school, to primary school, was will he ever have friends? Will he ever sit and have a conversation with someone? Is he going to be able to interact with others? Or if he needs something in the future, will he be able to use his voice to ask for help? Mm-hmm. Those, those were my, my biggest concern. And Funny enough, after about two months, he started primary school. Uh, we were on the bus, and my son was always quiet. Then one of his friends uh, came to the bus and said, Oh, hi, Edward. Hi, Edward's mom. Because, you know, for the children, 
oh, what should I say? Oh, this, okay. So for the children, you know, you never have a name. You are Edward's mom, you are whoever's mom. <laughs> they call you mom all yeah. the time. And he asked me if Eddie would, could sit next to him, if it was okay. And I said, yeah. But my heart was like, oh my God, my son's not going to say anything. The boy's not going to like Eddie. He's going to call him bad names. I was so worried. I was freaking out. Then my son was sitting with him on the bus and they were chatting. He was talking. He was saying that he liked the teacher and they started talking about uh, the PE classes and that they like moving like this or moving like that. They like the song and they like the teacher. They like their friends. They like the school. They like the food. And he was just interacting. I started crying because that for me was the point. I was like, oh my God, something happened. here. So they were having a proper conversation, the two of them. I, I, I was crying. I was full of joy and I felt like I should get a speaker and tell everybody what was happening. <laughs> That's how I felt. Yeah, yeah. I was just happy. I was full of joy because it was like that was the moment that I realized, wow, I've done something good for this child. It was good mm -hmm. to be taking him all this time to speech and language. It was good to expose him to other children. It was good that I yeah. didn't stay home afraid of other people's conceptions. It's true. So that, that was the moment for me, you see, that I was just filled with joy and hope. That, that was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. I'll never forget that. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, I think you, you took it really well. And, um, and, and as, I, as I've said, I think the first step for you was to accept, <laughs> to accept it because if you don't accept it, then you'll be isolating yourself and then that hinders his development as well because exactly. he will be at home as, as you did and as, as, as you took that challenge and say, you know what, I'm going to take it positively and I'll do anything I can just to make sure he's exposed out there. He's, I'm, I'm not going to treat him any differently. He's just a child like any other child. Exactly. And I think that is the first step you did. And sometimes people go through stuff and uh, it, it never could, it's, it's as, we, as we were saying, sometimes we shouldn't judge because we don't know the journey they are walking. We don't know the exactly. Journey. As you're saying yourself, exposing Edward has made him to be where he is right now. Exactly. Exactly. He managed to develop uh, to the point that I could let him play in the park. Mm. And I didn't have to be on top of him the whole time. Like, you know, yeah. like, like, like a very protective mom. <laughs> yeah. I could just sit yeah. and observe. I was just giving him the freedom and, and, and guiding. I wasn't that doing yeah. it for him. He, he's his own man. He's his own person. And yeah. you said something very important during this question. You're saying about uh, not being denial and be able to expose myself. Yes, I expose myself. Expose myself. Because from the moment you have that victim mentality, you stop learning you stop believing yourself. I, I, I do believe that if you adapt the victim mentality, you don't develop. Mm. You, no, you, you don't. don't try. You just exist. You're not thriving on anything because you don't take risks. You are not confident. You don't know who you are. You think somebody else thinks, has this idea of me and I accept it. No, you have to be yourself. Mm. So for me to get to the point of, of being myself, and accepting that being vulnerable sometimes yeah it's okay it's okay mm. if i want to cry it's okay that doesn't make me a bad person that doesn't make me weak no. sometimes i was just exhausted but i was exhausted because i was trying something i wasn't just accepting mm. and doing nothing i was doing something uh and i do think that we all we all have to be like that it has to be a, a you know 
universal mindset of, of doing something for yourself and uh, chasing your dreams or, or, or chasing uh, better things for your family, especially when it has to do to your child. You cannot just accept defeat in somebody else's perception. You need to be your own person and, and fight for it. Yeah, and I think that is a very important point there. You need to be who you are. You need to be yourself. And sometimes exactly. you shouldn't care about what people think about you. Because sometimes when we dwell so much about what will people say, what will people do, it limits us. Yes. Which hinders us uh, from progressing forward because you're not out there to please anybody. You are out there living your journey like everybody else. And I think it's yes. acknowledging myself, my self-identity. Who am I? What am I supposed to do? What do I want for myself? Exactly. What do I want for my child? And I think exactly. putting everything away because people will come with lots of negativity and people will have all these oh, yeah. um, and we can't, we can't help it. We live in a society where we are judgmental. We live in a society where we've got, um, we perceive things differently. And I think it's you as a person, taking upon yourself, accepting you, me, myself, yes, and taking, walking your journey. Not minding what people will say, but fighting yes. for what is right and living righteously. Uh, and, and I think that, sh that is a key to many of the yes. to, to success, I believe. And that Something is a key only. to us not limiting ourselves or holding ourselves back, Claudia. And I think you, you, you're walking that journey yourself and you're doing it for yourself and for your son. Yeah, it's one step at a time, you know. <laughs> one step at a time. And we all get there. Oh yeah, eventually. Yeah. <laughs> I think the point here is not giving up. Yes. Not giving up. Not giving up. Right. Um, let me ask you this before we uh, the young man joins us. Um, okay. Do you do you have any autistic clubs or uh, services? Do you access services? Are you, do you, do you feel supported? Do you feel that oh you, you know what I can access? I can access that. Do, do you feel yes. supported in terms of um, the services that you receive? Yes, and um, all of them, they are so important. You, you cannot despise anything. Even if it's just one person far away, it's good to be in touch with people because, you know, we support each other and we grow together. That's how it works. Mm -hmm. And okay. uh, there, are, there are groups on Facebook. I'm a member of about five or eight groups. I'm not, I'm not mistaken. And I'm always in touch with parents from all over the world because we all go through something different. Because autism affected my child in one area. Some of the children's they, some of the children, pardon, they were affected in different areas. Sometimes physically, some of them are, have mm. uh, mobility issues. Some of them have, some of them cannot hear properly or not keep an eye contact or even speak or write their own names. Uh, yeah. We all, you yeah. see, we all go through, through something different, uh, but we are there for each other. And that's very important. We, we can't go for Oh, yes, I was saying about we do have groups on Facebook, plenty groups over there, and I believe, I'm not sure, I'm part of five or eight, something like that. <laughs> so I'm able to communicate with parents from all over the world and we help each other because we all go through, we we'll go through the same thing but in different ways, let's put it like that. Because autism oh, yeah. is different and it affects everyone in a different way as well. Um, mm. There are support groups in the community center there are support groups as well that you can find in children's center at the school. Yeah. And the school also facilitates that you meet other parents or it also facilitates that you can meet uh, professionals like National Autistic Society. You can always, they, they are fantastic actually. You talk to them, they support you, they support your child, they support you for your journey and you can have also some mental health help because it's not easy yeah. for the parents it's not easy no, of course no. it's good to talk no. to someone but sometimes you need yeah. professional help to deal with that 
okay. because it, it feels it can feel very lonely yeah and you feel strange on exposing yourself exposing your feelings your fears and we just need someone to listen we just need someone to listen yeah. that's what happened yeah. Yeah, I think you feel vulnerable at that point sometimes because you're sharing your stories. Your stories, like you, 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 there's no privacy about yourself. So you're telling people about the story, and, yes. and sometimes we are human beings. We don't want to share all these intimate stories or intimate journeys about ourselves. But on the other hand, if it's a little bit of our own benefit, they say a problem shared is a problem half solved. As talking to somebody about it. they might not be able to solve it but i think they would give you a story that will give you motivation and encourage you moving forward and um actually yeah it, it's a very interesting journey and and i and i think it's accepting as i've, as I've said is accepting number one and um not blaming yourself not feeling guilty about yourself and also sharing your story yeah and looking what for help yeah, it's okay yeah, yeah. to look for help. It's okay to ask for help. There's nothing now wrong. You're taking words from my mouth. But I wanted to ask you, what would you tell somebody, a parent, who's there struggling with a child, maybe not even autistic, um, or maybe displaying um, different um, diagnoses, and they feel, you know what, I don't want my child to be, uh, to be labeled. I don't feel comfortable in accessing any support. What would you tell a parent who's good? Because sometimes it's it's just the fear of the unknown. What would you say to such a parent based on your experience? Well, I would say believe that you can and you're halfway there because we, we can do whatever we set our minds to. And we need to believe in ourselves and we need to believe in the child. And we need to believe in God because there, there is a higher power, you know, that you can grasp strength from yeah. that can move you forward and keep you going. So you need to have faith, have faith mm. in God, have faith in yourself, ask for help. It's yeah. okay to be vulnerable. It's not, it's not weakness. I think that from the moment you're vulnerable and you express mm. your feelings, and you say, okay, I need help. I'll look for help. You start understanding yourself. You'll find strength that you didn't even know you had. <laughs> See? Mm. It's, I know. it's a fantastic discovery journey. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And it's okay to ask for help. It's okay to cry. It's okay to feel lonely. What is not okay is to give up. Giving up is not an option. Yeah. No, yeah. no man left behind. You have to be strong. You know, you wake up, take a deep breath, be grateful, and carry on. There's always a way. There's always a way. Oh, there's always a way. I think, as you say, always. the point here is not giving up, marching on, Never. not giving up. Never. Giving up cannot be an option. Right. On that note, um, I know you want to share this story with Mr. Edward. Is he there? Can we say hello to him? Yes. Just give me a moment, please. I'm going to call him. Okay. Okay. All right. You're gonna have to <laughs> sit. <laughs> sit down. I'll stay right next to you, like that. Is that all right? Because I think it's better. Hello. Oh, hello, Edward. How are you? Where's the camera? He's right there. It's a yellow. Yes. Hello. 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 Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How are you, Edward? I'm fine. Oh my word, it's good to see you. It's good to see you too. Wow, how old are you, Edward, if I may ask you? How old are you? I'm nine years old. Oh, you're nine years old? Oh my goodness, you're such a big boy, right? Yes. <laughs> oh wow, what year are you? I'm at year four. Soon right. in September, I'll be in year five. Oh wow! Oh my goodness! You're going to be in year five soon. Are you looking forward to joining year five? Yes, I really. Mm. I'm a bit shy, but I'm also okay. 
it's okay to be shy. It's allowed to be shy, but you'll be fine. Because uh, you're going to be with the same friends you were with in Eapo, isn't it? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you, you, you'll be okay. I can tell you'll be okay. So how was school? How, how, was school? how, was, how has been school? Well, at school, I feel, yeah. I feel very, very happy because the staff take very good care of me. Oh, wow. Oh, that's good. That's very good to hear. What do you like doing in school? Uh, my favourite subject is English because, right. because I like reading and writing, grammar, literature, all that. It's all things to oh, do with reading well. and writing. Okay. What, what, which book do you like reading? Tell me. Your favourite mm, book. My favourite book. Hmm. It would have to be. The book about London. All right. Do you know the author of the book? Can you remember the author yeah. of the book? No. Right. Okay, it's all right. Don't worry about it. Tell me a little bit. What does the book say? Is it Journey to London? No, it just, it just tells you about all the things at London. Right, like, give me an uh, example. And I like finding out the facts and learning what you can do everywhere. Oh, wow. Oh, that's fantastic. So what do you want to do when you grow up? Okay, when you finish schooling, what do you want to be? I want to be a train driver and a British sitcom creator. Mm, I can see you've got options there. Why, if I may ask, why a train driver? Are you fascinated by trains? Do you like trains? Oh, I really, really, really love trains. <laughs> oh, wow. So, do you travel most of the time by train? Yes, a lot. Just today I travelled yeah. on the train. Right. Oh, wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's good. It's good to hear from you, Edward. And it's good to see that you're such a big boy and you've got so much dreams about your future and what you want to do. And I wish you all the best of luck. Thank you. Yeah, it's good to see you. And I'm sure I'll see you sometime and keep on doing what you do. So what are you doing now because of school? Are you, are you close school? Are you still in school? No, because, no. Of, the, because of the coronavirus, I'm staying at home just to be safe. And of course, you have to be yeah. safe. So what have you been doing at home? Drawing, reading, writing, imagining. Oh, wow. <laughs> you can That's tell imagining. That's a very good thing to do. So have you been drawing quite, quite a lot of your thoughts? Have you been drawing your thoughts and how you'd like things to be and trains and everything yeah, else? Usually I draw trains. I can imagine. Right. Okay. Edward, it is fantastic to hear from you. And I wish you all the best in year five. Thank you. Yeah? Because you only are here five, then you're going to be year six, then you, it's going to be high school, isn't it? So you only have two more years left. Yeah. And I really want it to go well. It will go well. You know what? Because you're a positive young person, and I'm sure everything will go well. Mom is there to support you in every way, and you've got a drive. Yeah, you're very, very um, future focused. You know what you want in your life. You know how you're gonna do it. You, 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 and you're doing a fantastic, fantastic job. And I think you'll achieve what you want, uh, Edward. Yeah, the sky is the limit. Okay. Thank you very yeah. much.
It's been You're a pleasure speaking to you. Oh my word, it's my pleasure to meet you, Edward. And I would love to meet you sometime when the coronavirus is gone. I'll come and visit you one of these days, yeah? When we are oh. safe, okay? That sounds very intriguing. It is, it is. I would like to come and sit down and you're going to tell me more about the books you've been reading. How about that? Okay. All right then. All right, I'll leave, I'll let you go. And thank you so much for giving me your time. Just a moment, Patricia. No worries. What happened? Okay. Can you see her? Yes, Would I can. Would you like to hold? Yes. Yeah? Okay. But you have to look this way, okay? Oh, okay. Okay. Talk to her then. All right. So what would you I'm like, is there anything else you'd like me to talk about? Would you like to ask me any question now? Well, I, I can answer you one. If I can, but don't ask me a difficult one. No, I'm okay. Thanks. <laughs> all right. Okay. All right then. That has been, uh, it has been, uh, I've enjoyed my time with you and I can tell you, you're such a clever, intelligent young person. And this, as I've said to you, don't be shy, but it's okay to be shy sometimes. Yeah. But don't let China hold you back. Okay. Okay. Bye. Uh, I, wish you, I wish you all the best. Bye, bye, Edward. Oh, well done, darling. Thank you. Very proud of you. Oh. He got really shy. <laughs> oh my goodness, he's such a sweet boy. Oh, oh wow. He he is, so he well. is, but you know, Patricia. Yeah, but he's so talkative. I'm just. I'm just amazed that he was so quiet, you know, he froze. <laughs> he he froze, was frozen out. Intelligent young man. He wow. Is. Wow. I'm amazed. I'm amazed he by is. his 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 um articulate. He can articulate himself, he can communicate yes. with me, and he's got big words and he loved reading. Wow. He, he does. Job he does. Oh thank you. Thank you know well, what we, we do together. <laughs> together. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, and uh, keep on what you're doing. Never give up. Never. Never, never, never give up. Not never, an never option. <laughs> and and thank you so much, Claudia, for joining us tonight. What is your final word to people who are watching us? Give us your final word. Oh, my final words. Yes. Oh, dear. I always have a lot to say, so I'm just wondering how can I summarize that for you. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> I already, I already said about not giving up and uh, to parents that just found out that their kid may have a disability, mm. I would like to say, don't, don't feel guilty. Don't blame yourself. Don't blame yourself. God will yeah. give special children to make us special. And from the moment that we understand that, that we take care of the gift that God has given us, we, okay. we are able to empower somebody else. And that's how it works. It's a chain of hope, a chain of support, mm. chain of joy, because yeah. we just grow from there. We can't give yeah. up. We have to be resilient. And if you have to fall, you have to fall forward as i heard you never fall backwards you fall forward you stand up forward. and you carry on that's very important giving up is not an option falling forward moving forward thank you claudia and thank you, you so much welcome. for sharing your story with your son as well i know it has not been an easy journey for you of course it has its challenges and it's not the end and I believe you're going to go places. And your son is such a fantastic young person, very articulate, mm. very intelligent. I have no words. I have no words. And I feel so humbled to have met him virtually. And hopefully one day I'll meet him physically. And we'll sit you're on one time. You tell me a lot of his stories. <laughs> you come have some tea with us. You're more than welcome to come. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I will. 
Right. And um, with that, viewers, we've come to the end of tonight's show. What an inspiring journey from Claudia and her son, Edward. As you've seen, he is such an articulate young person and mom is not giving up on him. She's always there to support this young person. And I think that's all what we have to do. Never giving up. And I'm going to leave you with this word sometime that um, autistic. Let's not forget the things that these children cannot do. Let's remember the things that they can do. Let's not focus on what they cannot do. Let's focus on what they can do. And we should not limit them because they are very intelligent. Everybody is unique. Gotcha. And we have our own gifts and talents. And you know what? As always God says, he has better plans for every one of us. Let's not give up. That's the message for tonight. Yeah, and the love viewers, we've come to the end of tonight's show. And thank you so much, Claudia and Edward. And thank you so much for whoever is watching us tonight. Have a very positive uh, evening and have a great, great week ahead. Thank you very much.